Hello everybody. Welcome to the post war periods. After the second world war. What happened? I'm going to tell you about that. And then we'll talk about Dylan Thomas and the new apocalypse movement. Guys, the second world war was a devastating event in world history. Everything that people believed in regarding nation and patriotism, heroism and human being, everything changed because of the Second World War, its holocaust and also the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The post-war period is a period of isolation and alienation, fragmentation, much worse than the modernist period. It is a time when a lot of new voices also began to be heard. There was a lot of democratization of art. Politics was in a turmoil at this time. So many changes, oh my God. So many genres. As you know, in this time, postmodernism came into being. But at the same time, there were so many other changes in fiction, poetry, drama, science fiction, historical fiction, holocaust fiction, women's writing, everything emerged, post-colonial literature, everything emerged at this time. The post-war poets were in many ways trying to come to terms with their reality. They were coming to negotiate between the influence of the modernists and also the realities of the post-1950s period. And they understood that uh, reality is not simple, it is not plain, it is very complex. Literary expression also ranged from the plain to the intellectually intense and complex. During this time, English literature began to be globalized. English literature began to be written across the world. English literature broke free from the confines of British or American literature to world literature. So many writers from across the world who had emigrated into England and America. So many writers writing from the uh, erstwhile colonies. So many writers getting translated into English. It was an amazing period. At this time, in the period of the Second World War itself, there emerged New Apocalypse Poetry or Neo-Romantic Poetry. Dylan Thomas was a main figure. As the title denotes, New Apocalypse is about the apocalypse of mankind. You know, the end. Writing in the World War period, naturally, they wondered what the end would be like. And it was also Neo-Romantic. There was a revival of romantic motives like nature, childhood, innocence. There are, apart from um, Dylan Thomas, other poets also. Shall I read out their names for you? Dylan Thomas, Vernon Watkins, George Barker, Philip O'Connor, Ian Bancroft, Norman McCaig. Have you heard these names? They are not as famous as Dylan Thomas. They were all neo-romantic poets. These poets became famous and they came to be acknowledged as a group because of some anthologies. There were three anthologies. Do you know the titles? The New Apocalypse came in 1939. The White Horseman came in 1941. The Crown and the Sickle came in 1945. Edited by J.F. Henry, uh, Henry Threes, etc. So, these are important aspects of New Apocalypse movement and its um, rise at this time. New Apocalypse kind of ended with the anthology New Lines by Robert Conquest which marked the beginning of the movement poets. So, 1930s, Auden Group. 1940s, Dylan Thomas and Apocalypse, New Apocalypse Poets. 1950s, Movement Poets, also Angry Young Man Movement along with them. 
Dylan Thomas was born in the year in which the first world war began 1914 and he was born in Swansea in Wales and he was typically Welsh Celtic poet he wrote in English with a unique style uh, an individual voice and uh, his first collection of poems is called 18 poems published when he was just 20 years old his most famous collection containing all his major poems is deaths and entrances 1946 okay very important Dylan Thomas was a performer he read poetry he did radio shows he was also a bohemian artist means drinking and wayward life and Dylan Thomas uh, became a celebrity. He was the first poet to become a celebrity by his poetry recitation or reading. He toured America with uh, uh, his reading programs. And uh, he was also a hard drinking uh, bohemian at this time. And eventually he died early at the age of 39 also. So, let us now talk about Dylan Thomas's poetic style. Remember guys, poetry is nothing unless it is read. Every day before you go to sleep perhaps, read some poems. And you should have a timetable for it, a schedule for it. Okay, today I'll read Dylan Thomas, tomorrow I'll read. You can do one thing also, you can read aloud and make a video or audio and you can start a blog with it you can start your own youtube channel with it every day at 10 your own poetry recitation how is the idea i will look forward to subscribing to your channel okay so do something and read you know starting a channel etc will push you to do it every day and who knows you will become a famous reciter like dylan thomas so read it his poetic style is uh, perfect for reading he goes against the trend of social criticism at this time and writes with emotional intensity Dylan Thomas's poetry is good to be read because it has emotional intensity and it has a metrical perfection more traditional than modernist he was and he gave importance to sound and rhythm so it is good for reading he uses rich imaginative language deeply symbolic imagery and influence of French surrealism, surrealistic poems. He was influenced by D.M. Uh, Hopkins and uh, he wrote a lot about uh, the human body, sin and redemption, Old Testament. These are some of his pet themes. Now many of you would know some of his major poems, a poem in October, uh, Fern Hill, these are very famous. Fern Hill is an autobiographical poem that he uh, wrote about his remembrances or reminiscences about his childhood in his aunt's farm. Fern Hill is his aunt's farm. As an adult, he is remembering those days and lamenting the laws of childhood. Fern Hill is a poem in uh, two parts. It is in the first part that he writes about his memories as a child and in the second part, he writes about his lost innocence and childhood. Poem in October is also autobiographical. It is written about his birthday, the 30th birthday. He is going up a hill and he is um, looking at uh, the world around him, remembering his past, again childhood. Picture of uh, the old childhood, uh, early past juxtaposed with his adulthood. And it's a spiritual reflection that you see here. There are many other poems. Do not go gentle into that good night is a famous poem that is prescribed in universities and he's talking to his father while he's dying. Then Under Milkwood is a radio play that he has written. Did you know Dylan Thomas wrote short stories, The Map of Love and Portrait of the Artist as a Young Dog. These are two uh, short story collections that he has written. And after Dylan Thomas and the New Apocalypse, we have Philip Larkin and the Movement Poets. Philip Larkin's Movement poet, Poetry was against the neo-romanticism of Dylan Thomas. Philip Larkin was a classicist 
and he wrote uh, in a very serious, somber, solemn tone about contemporary reality. Movement poetry flourished in the 1950s and the main figures were Philip Larkin, Tom Gunn, Elizabeth Jennings, Donald Davey, etc. The term the movement was coined by J.D. Scott. Did you know that? I told you they were against Dylan Thomas' style. So they were anti-romantic. They were witty, colloquial. They were also anti-modernist. They did not write in the elitist style, experimental style of modernism. No, no. They wrote in a very conversational, colloquial style and a very sardonic tone. Sardonic means very solemn, serious tone. Uh, they, they were not very conventional in their style, but they were not very innovative either. Uh, and they did not describe nature for its own sake. I am describing the movement in negative terms, am I not? D.J. Enright was a, an editor of uh, an anthology, Poets of the 50s, was an important anthology of the movement poets. D.J. Enright was the editor, but D.J. Enright also wrote movement poetry. Did you know DJ Enright was a student of F.R. Leavis? He was a professor in Egypt, Singapore, Thailand, Japan. And he has written some poems. Did, have you heard of Dreaming in the Shanghai Restaurant? Dreaming in the Shanghai Restaurant is by uh, DJ Enright. Philip Larkin is very famous, a poet. He was also a novelist. He was a jazz critic. He was a librettist. And Philip Larkin uh, wrote poetry as a librarian. He was a librarian by profession. You might already know his major poems like uh, Church Going, Wits and Weddings, uh, Toad, Ambulances, etc. Before we talk about that, I should tell you a little more about his poems. He uh, represented a sense of loss, a beauty departed in his poems. He talked about everyday modern life, in a colloquial language with a personal tone and he edited the Oxford book of 20th century English verse. His first collection the North Ship is a little famous, the Less Deceived is another collection and uh, let me now talk about uh, some of the important poems. The Wits and Weddings is a journey that is taking from um, on a train from Hull to London and he's describing the scenery outside. Church going is when he is going into a church and wondering what will become of religion, what will become of churches. He is saying that um, probably churches will not remain but then he also says churches will be necessary because in this world when everything is falling apart we need this serious house for some serious discussions. So probably churches will remain. So there is an ambivalence here in church going. Ambulances is a poem that conveys the loneliness of age and death. Uh, death will come to everyone and ambulances are a, an objective correlative for death. Then uh, Donald Davey is an important poet who wrote poems like Remembering the 30s, Wood Pigeons at Rahini. Why am I saying these titles? Because these are prescribed in universities. Under Brig Flats is a very major book. Under Brig Flats is a history of the 30 years of uh, British poetry that went before. Elizabeth Jennings is a movement poet with a difference. Elizabeth Jennings wrote movement poetry style only, but she wrote two themes that are not at all used in movement poetry by other poets. One is she writes about um, Roman Catholicism. Second is she writes about mental disorder. These two are themes that are very new in movement poetry. Then there is Tom Gunn. Tom Gunn uh, is a movement poet who wrote the very famous poem, On the move man you gotta go. And uh, he has also written uh, poems uh, based on AIDS, etc. All these poets talked about the contemporary society. A poet who is somewhat related to movement poetry is Ted Hughes. He is not a major movement poet, but he was a poet laureate and he uh, had some themes related to movement poetry. 
he studied archaeology and anthropology he married Sylvia Plath as you know it was she who encouraged him to write poetry and he has written many famous poems uh, in collections like the hawk in the rain Lupercal etc all of you know that he's a, a poet of animal vitality animal life and vitality this was the time of the Second World War the world was being torn apart by the Second World War so much bad kind of violence and he's juxtaposing human violence with animal violence which is more natural and necessary hawk roosting is a very major poem of this kind he has also used uh, predators in his poems jaguar pike etc to represent animal uh, violence and vitality another poem which is not related to violence but it is related to writing of poetry is the thought fox he is comparing the coming of a fox the approach of a fox very cautious approach of a fox to the approach of poetry how poetry comes to the poet is like how a thought uh, a fox approaches and then he has written many other important uh, poems like the crow poems which are very uh, important because of the metaphoric way in which they talk about uh, contemporary life in, in through the metaphor of the crow and uh, which is an archetypal mythic symbol of every man then he has written birthday letters that is the collection in which for the first time he revealed his relationship with Sylvia Plath which led to the suicide of the uh, lady poet he has written uh, some children's books like Iron Man Shakespeare and the goddess of complete being is a book of literary criticism and uh, in a nutshell uh, Ted Hughes's poetry represents not only the, po the power and vitality of the animal world uh, as against the civilization of death of modernity but also he talks about God and primitiveness primeval elements are there uh, and also the ever present nature of evil evil is ever present in human life so ultimately in this world of confusions personal survival should be our goal personal survival is very necessary in this fragmented violent world that which we live in now there is another group of poets I need you to know that is called the group have you heard of the group called the group they were an informal group of poets in London who were active from the 50s to 60s period Philip Hobsbawm was a major figure Philip Hobsbawm Peter Porter have you heard he is a very important poet actually Peter Porter is an important poet of uh, the group Alan Brown John and George Macbeth they are not that famous because they don't have a common manifesto or anthology but uh, that they were a major group of poets at this time so guys I have talked about a lot of poets today uh, you have to read on your own these are all very interesting poets and very important poets now from here I will talk to you about other contemporary poets also there are so many poets that we need to know make sure you uh, read them there is another very interesting way uh, to catch up with these poets shall I tell you what it is listen to recitations in YouTube there are very good recitations of poems contemporary poems in YouTube Ted Hughes recitation or Ted Hughes poems like that if you Google search you will be able to find out make a playlist or something out of it and then you when in your leisure time you can listen to all that okay that that's an amazing way in which um, you can catch up with these contemporary poets so I hope you enjoyed this discussion uh, I have many more videos coming up please make sure you watch them in the correct order every day at 6 videopedia is also followed by uh, reels and shots with answers these days please make sure you watch them and follow them make a note of everything and with these free videos itself you will be able to become amazing scholars many people have uh, passed net with their self-learning with the help of these videos did you know guys hundred students have written to us have approached us 
after the exam saying ma'am because of your classes we have passed not only from youtube from our paid courses also because in paid courses you get to know all this really thoroughly i go over everything in very great detail so it is not a small thing we are doing guys this is a huge thing that we are doing and uh, be with us follow all this and next time we should make the 100 1000 okay so all the best welcome to our family we are there to work for you and you're making the best out of it this is a great collaborative effort that we are making and i'm sure it will have great results so thank you everyone for your cooperation support encouragement and love happy reading bye bye